So the first of three different topics that we'll be taking a look at during this demonstration is PowerShell's built-in discoverability capabilities. PowerShell includes several tools, commandlets, and help topics that will assist an individual who's first getting started. The first command you should learn to use in PowerShell is the get command commandlet. This commandlet will present the user with a full list of commandlets that are available across all the modules on their system. So once we find the commandlet that we would like to learn how to use, we can use the get-help commandlet followed by the name of the commandlet that we want to get help on. So not only does the help topics include descriptions on what the commandlet is going to be used for, it also includes a parameter option under the remarks section in order to get a list of different examples on how to use it. One of the next big hurdles in learning how to use PowerShell's massive library of commandlets is viewing a list of the possible parameters that can be used with each commandlet that we learn. When typing out commands and parameters in PowerShell, tab can be used to autocomplete what you're trying to type. So let's take a look at a list of all parameters used by the right host commandlet by using the asterisk as a wildcard. The second major topic we want to view here is dot notation. We can use this to step into and call properties or methods of a particular object that we're working with. This can also be used to ensure that you don't pull in the labels with the data as that's going to make it increasingly difficult to pass into future variables or parameter values. So here's a normal result of the get date commandlet. So we'll go ahead and use the get member commandlet to get a list of the different methods and properties for the get date commandlet. So here we can see an entire list of the different properties and the methods that are used by the get dash date command. We're going to use dot notation to ask to see just the year property of the get date commandlet. We need to provide parentheses in this example to ensure that the get date commandlet runs first before we pull out just the year. Now following that idea that before we can ask to see just the year, we need to make sure we get the date info first. We could use a variable like this. Now once the variable holds the results of the get date commandlet, we can use dot notation to pull out just the property that we want to see. We can even use the get member commandlet against just the year property through dot notation to see what properties and methods that the year has. Now this time let's see the use of a method in dot notation. Methods have the open and close parentheses at the end. This is required and used by PowerShell to differentiate between methods, which are usually actions, and properties, which are usually just data. Let's also see what would happen if we left those parentheses off. So the last topic that we need to cover is something a lot of people have trouble with at first in PowerShell. I usually get the question like this, what does the dollar sign underscore dot mean? So let's first take a look at what the dollar sign underscore is first. So that I have something to use in the example, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable with two values in it. So the dollar sign underscore is a temporary built-in variable in PowerShell. When you use a pipeline, the values that are being passed into the next command, such as in the for each object commandlet, are temporarily passed through into the dollar sign underscore variable to be used. So now let's see how this plays into the dollar sign underscore dot by using the get service command. And let's first look at a list of all the services. So just like dot notation in the prior topic that we went over, the dollar sign underscore dot status in this example allows us to use dot notation to pull out just the status, which is either running or stopped, in the get service command. Just a quick tip, dollar sign ps item can be used in place of dollar sign underscore now in PowerShell 3.0 and above. Well, that's it for my three tips to help any beginner in PowerShell. Keep an eye out for more advanced topics in the future.